Have you heard about the fasting mimicking diet by Walter Longo? I certainly have, but I think that the ketogenic fasting mimicking diet can be actually much more effective and easier. So check out this video and make sure you subscribe for future videos like this one. The fasting mimicking diet or FMD is a fasting protocol that deprives your body from calories for a certain period of time. You're not gonna fast from all food, but you're still gonna consume a small amount of calories every day. This can quote unquote mimic some of the benefits of extended fasting. Studies on the fasting mimicking diet have shown that it lowers cholesterol, C-reactive protein, blood glucose, IGF-1 and blood pressure. However, it's possible that these effects simply came from caloric restriction. The fasting mimicking diet is a low protein, moderate carb, moderate fat type of diet that restricts your calories to less than 40% of what you would normally consume. You're gonna be eating about 500 to 1000 calories for 2-5 to five days and on the 6th day you're gonna return to a normal way of eating. During this period you're gonna induce a huge caloric deficit, you're gonna lose some weight and you're gonna improve your insulin sensitivity and other health benefits of fasting. On the original fasting mimicking diet, you can eat things like a nut bar, a bowl of soup and some crackers with a few olives or something like that. Day 1 you eat about 1000 calories, 10% protein, 55% fat and 35% carbs. Day 2 to 5 you eat about 500 to 700 calories, 10% protein, 45% fat, 45% carbs. Day 6 you transition back to a normal caloric intake. Not so fast. Although the fasting mimicking diet can give you some of the benefits of fasting, it's not as effective as a real extended fast. Most of the benefits of FMD come from this serious caloric restriction that you experience. Compared to the fasting mimicking diet, an extended 3 to 5 day fast is gonna have a much greater effect on longevity as well as weight loss. First of all, you're gonna create a larger energy deficit because of your eating zero calories. Secondly, you're gonna reset your immune system and eliminate all pathogens. Third, autophagy will recycle a lot more dysfunctional and weak cells because of the higher nutrient stress. Fourth, it's actually much easier to stick to zero calories and stay in a deeper fasted state rather than eating smaller amounts of unsatiating foods that can actually make you hungrier than you were before. And fifth, an extended fast can actually make you maintain more muscle than eating at a serious caloric deficit for a few days. If you're restricting your calories or you're going for these longer fasts, then you want to get into ketosis because it's gonna protect against muscle catabolism. It's also gonna make it so much easier because your body's gonna tap into its body fat stores without having to worry about an energy crisis or anything like that. The fasting mimicking diet can maintain a semi-ketogenic state but it's still not optimal because of the macronutrient ratios aren't going to keep you in ketosis for long. In fact, the ketogenic diet consistently, even without fasting, has been shown to provide many of the same benefits as the fasting making diet, such as lower blood pressure, decreased insulin, reduced inflammation and fat loss. You can even experience mild autophagy after an overnight fast on a low carb diet. The only benefits you wouldn't get from eating keto are suppressed IGF-1 and some other things that happen only during fasting. The fasting mimicking diet has its place and I do think that it can work in some situations. But if I were to ever do it, then I would definitely change up the macronutrient ratios and fit more of a ketogenic template. Just because it's going to make it easier and it's going to be more effective for both triggering the longevity pathways as well as maintaining muscle. Don't move a muscle. The macros of the standard keto diet are 5% carbs, 15% protein, 80% fat and they already mimic the physiology of fasting to a large degree. In fact, it was first developed to treat epileptic children who didn't get any seizures when they were fasting. To make this effect more sustainable in their everyday life, the doctors created the ketogenic diet that eliminates all carbohydrates, reduces inflammation and switches the body over to a fat-based metabolism. If you're gonna combine severe caloric restriction with the ketogenic diet while practicing some time-restricted feeding, then I would say that you're gonna gain the same benefits of the fasting mimicking diet but you're also going to activate more autophagy, you will maintain more muscle mass and it's going to be easier for you. So here's how to do the ketogenic fasting mimicking diet. First is the preparation phase. Eat low carb foods for 1 to 2 days with about 10 to 20% carbs, 25 to 35% protein and 60% fat. This is going to deplete your glycogen and ignite ketosis. Second, practice time restricted feeding. 
limit the time spent in a fed state and fast for at least 14 to 18 hours every day. This keeps you in deeper autophagy during the fasting period. Third, the fasting mimicking ketogenic phase. Drop your calories to 40% of what you normally consume. You may not need any more than 600 to 800 calories. Reduce your carbs to 5 to 10% and eat only very limited amounts of low-carb vegetables like some broccoli or cabbage. Protein should also stay relatively limited because the amino acids can slow down the benefits of the fast. Stick to 15%. A few days of protein restriction are actually beneficial for insulin sensitivity and future muscle growth. The rest of the calories should come from ketogenic fats like MCT oil or olive oil. In total, stay under 1000 calories and do this for 3 to 4 days. Eat nutrient-dense foods. You'd want to get more nutrients from fewer calories. Eat organ meats, egg yolks, take a green juice powder, add herbs and spices to your foods that stimulate autophagy like turmeric, ginger, ginseng and medicinal mushrooms. A cup of bone broth, fish roe, some BCAs and cod liver oil are great supplements for this. And lastly, on days 4 or 5, you should increase your caloric intake back to 80% of where it used to be. Then on day 7, you're gonna return to baseline and this can help you to avoid this rebounding effect of gaining weight. After that, you can continue on with your whatever type of diet you were doing. Uh -huh. What I recommend you to do is to practice daily time restricted feeding every day and fast for at least 16 hours at minimum if you extend it up to 18 and 20 hours then that would be even better when it comes to these extended three to five day fasts then you should have them for at least a few times every year but you can also have these ketogenic fasting mimicking diet phases for a few days of the month to really ignite fat loss, boost more autophagy and benefit your longevity overall. Even if you're trying to build muscle, then that's going to be a really good strategy. I myself tend to have these ketogenic fasting mimicking days of consuming about 500 to 800 calories at least two times per month. That's better. Originally, the fasting mimicking diet was done for people who are used to having very high eating frequency, they're eating a bunch of carbs and they haven't even fasted ever. So the idea is that they can, you know, gateway drug themselves into much more caloric deficit by mimicking the physiology of fasting. The best thing you could do is to have a long fast, but these ketogenic fasting mimicking days are still great for maintaining more muscle mass while still promoting longevity. So if you want to learn how to do intermittent fasting, then check out my free guide to intermittent fasting ebook. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. My name is Seem. Click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. Stay optimized, stay empowered.